reason I would assume they didn't charge it is because, again, it's just a misdemeanor. And so what's the point? Um, what's the, what does it add? And so why risk the jury compromising and acquitting on felonies? And, you know, because he's, he's dead to rights on the conspiracy. And I think it's, it was a strategic decision for them to, um, to not to charge a misdemeanor because if you have misdemeanors and felonies on an indictment, sometimes they might, juries might compromise. And it's not, it's counterintuitive that, it, that the conspiracy, which, is seems like the most serious charge and it would be on top of the indictment on the very top even though it's the lowest charge probably because it it, it tells the story and so it seems counterintuitive that a conspiracy would be a lesser charge or a misdemeanor than the felony and if the jury had some issues about the legal theory that they're relying on for falsification of business records to bump it up to a felony then maybe they might compromise and so they don't want to risk that so i would guess those are the reasons they didn't charge conspiracy uh I, however, and, and those are legitimate concerns, and, and I think that it's perfectly legitimate that the, where they landed. I just happened to land on the other side, and I think that they should have charged conspiracy. And the reason is I wouldn't want to risk, I mean, all 34 counts in the indictment are about Stormy Daniels, 100%. And the legal theory that they're relying on to bump this up to a felony. So false. So just to go over the elements of the crime really quick, falsification of a business records is a misdemeanor in New York. And the elements are of that crime are with the intent to deceive, you falsify a business record, right? And it, it's very just, um, it's just very simple. And there's no doubt that Donald Trump did that crime. It becomes a felony if your intent to deceive and defraud uh, involved trying to, the intent to uh, cover up, conceal, or commit another crime. And so there's been a lot of speculation of what is that other crime and why is it not charged in the indictment if they were going to commit or cover up another crime? Why is that not charged in the indictment? Oftentimes it is in other cases. And so there's a lot of, um, a lot of speculation about that. Alvin Bragg in his press conference and in the statement of facts yesterday outlined what the crimes are that he believes they were intending or, or Trump was intending to commit and or conceal. And that was a federal election law violation, a state law viola election law violation, and tax crimes. So those are the three crimes that they are alleging Trump intended to commit or conceal. Uh, I, I'm sorry, those three, but it was conspiracy to commit those three crimes. So it, it, an actual conspiracy charge so that, that two or more people conspired, that would be Trump, Cohen, and Pecker conspired. That means they got together and agreed, we're going to catch and kill stories in order to influence the election. We are going to block and tackle, right? We're going to kill the stories, uh, of the people who are trying to uh, hurt Trump and we're going to promote stories of your opponents. We're going to, you know, other people's negative stories, we're going to find them and we're going to put them on the front page of the National Enquirer and anything bad about Trump, we're going to uh, suppress. And that's the criminal conspiracy. And we're going to do that to influence the election. We're not going to, and we're not going, we're going to pay people off, which in and of itself isn't a crime, but we're not going to claim it as uh, election contributions and PS we're going to also make it so that it looks like legal fees. And so we don't have to pay, it's not income. And so you don't have to pay income tax on it. You can just deduct it. So, so that's the legal theory that it was a conspiracy to commit those crimes. And Alvin Bragg's office, the DA's office is saying the conspiracy, the agreement to do all of that, in, and evidence of that includes the doorman and Stormy Daniels from this long period of time. And I think that's risky. I think that's risky because it's, yes, it was relied on in the grand jury, but it's not, it's not a charged crime. 
And it's not an overt act in a conspiracy. And I think one of the legal arguments that the defense is going to make is that it's a prior, it's a, it's an uncharged crime and uncharged crimes are typically not allowed in a criminal prosecution uh, because, in, because they will say, yes, it's probative, okay, it's relevant, it's probative, it's helpful, but it's overly prejudicial. And so some judges will keep that out. And so there's going to have to be a ruling on that, I think. And to me, it's risky. Whereas if it was in the conspiracy and they were overt acts in the conspiracy, the conspiracy to catch and kill, right? Scheme to defer, scheme, you know, to catch and kill stories and throw the election and the overt acts, the things they did are pay care. Karen McDougal, pay the doorman, pay Stormy, you know, all that, then it's your overt acts, then, then it is a charged crime and no one will keep it out. So I think the, I, I personally think it's slightly risky not to do it, but they're super smart lawyers. And I, you know, think they, I, 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 if they decided not to, they have a good reason not to, but I, like I said, I lean on the other side. So there's a mismatch, which is what we're talking about. There's a mismatch between the statement of facts, what used to be called the Bill of Particulars, and all of the facts that are listed there, from the Karen McDougal, woman number one, Stormy Daniels, woman number number two, the doorman and the illegitimate child rumor that was killed, which is all there. There's a mismatch between that and the charged crimes in the indictment, as you, Karen, pointed out, all of those 34 all of them, all those entries would would appear to support only the case involving uh, Stormy, uh, Stormy, uh, 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 Stormy, period, and not Karen and McDougal and not the doorman, so that you have that mismatch. Now, I guess you can clear that mismatch up later with a superseding indictment, which is an indictment that comes later, which which I guess the office could bring at the appropriate time. But right now you've got this mismatch and you're saying that potentially the defense could use it to the disadvantage of the prosecutor's office, understanding that the prosecutors knew about this mismatch and must have done it for a reason that we're going to follow. And and just so I can uh, kind of summarize it and then um, kind of just wrap up this particular segment, in the if we put up uh, uh, the statement of facts for a minute, the way it's broken down, the way to read it, if you want to read it on your own, is that you start with paragraphs two and three, and that sort of gives you what Karen's referred to as kind of this overarching conspiracy, the catch and kill, or um, or as Ronan Farrow, who discovered it as related to the doorman story, called it the um, uh, the uh, he called it the um, the buy and the buy and burn or something. I forget what he called it, but whatever he called it, it's the catch and kill. And then if you go to paragraph seven and nine, you'll see the meetings between David Pecker and what we now know is Michael Cohen in Trump Tower to devise the scheme. In paragraphs ten and eleven of the statement of facts, you see the doorman and the and the Matt Calamari, along with the rumor of an illegitimate 